Hello family and welcome, welcome, welcome to Word of Wisdom with D, where we pray that you obtain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in God as well as in his word. And first and foremost, I want to apologize for the mistake I made on the last video when I said that the Israelites were wandering around in the wilderness for 40 days. It was actually 40 years. 40 years they were wandering around in the wilderness. So please, 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 please accept my apology. I am so sorry for doing that. And like I said, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm, I'm telling y'all the honest God truth because my mind be going 100. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to put it all together and stuff and it just be all like oh but anyway but truly truly forgive me for that and stuff the Israelites roamed well was in the wilderness for 40 days on a 11 day journey and you see how the complaining can hinder hinder God's blessing in your life God move in your life a 40 year journey oh but anyway <laughs> that's not what we talking about on today today we're gonna be talking about love 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 you know and i tell you god word is full of examples of how god loves us and how we should love others and stuff and even in first corinthians 13 it tells us what love is and what love isn't and that is what i'm getting ready to read to you is is that first corinthians um chapter 13 verse 4 and this is the new living translation and it lets us know that love is patient and kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud proud or rude it does not demand its own way it is not erect i mean irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoice whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. And that is what the word of God is telling us that love is. And you know how um, God had got me out of love because I know on last week I was talking about also was selfishness. And I said, God, let me look into this more about selfishness. And so I was looking into it and it brought me to like a couple of verses and stuff like that. But it was just, it wasn't settling in my spirit. It wasn't like, you know, this is, this is the scripture I want you to talk about. So, I, to be honest with you, I don't know how I stumbled. Well, I know the Lord. The Lord directed me to this verse of love and stuff. But, I just want to point out where it lets us know in verse 5 that love, it does not demand its own way. It does not demand its own way. And I was all like, wow, that's what God is telling me. When you're selfish, you're lacking in love. That's what it is. And I was like, wow, 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 God. Because you're thinking about yourself and everything. And like I said, you know, with, with us being believers and Christians of God, this this walk that we're in with with Jesus with God with our with our um being a child of God is much bigger than us it's much bigger than me cuz God yes he does want us to take care of ourselves and and take care of this temple that we're in and stuff but he don't want your focus to be on yourself in order for us to know how to take care of our temple and stuff, we need to go to God. Because God knows us best. God knows even the hair, the number of hairs that's on our head. So why wouldn't we go to God 
and ask him, Lord, how can, how, show me how to take care of myself. Show me what I need to eat. Show me what exercise I need to do. Give me a plan. Give me a regimen. Give me something, Lord. And I, be, I believe he will give it to you. But anyway, I don't know why I went on that for. But I was, we, but we're talking about love though. Love. Because once again, if we love ourselves, we must go to God. Go to God. So he could show us how to truly love ourselves that when we begin to truly love ourselves then we'll begin to love others like he want us to love others you know because that's what the word said too love yourselves and your neighbors well it goes something like that <laughs> it, you know but that's what it is we must love ourselves if you don't love yourself, I think you won't be able to love your neighbors, you know? And once again, because like I said, in this word, it says love is patience and love is kind. And when we love, we're not getting jealous. We're not envying nobody. We ain't trying to covet nothing that nobody has because that's not love. That's the opposite of love. And I'm not saying that it's hate because you don't have to hate somebody to be jealous of them. You just, je that's just, you just jealous, you know, for some unknown reason. And when you start feeling those feelings of jealousy, of envy, of covenantness, that's when you need to go to God. God, for some ungodly reason, I am jealous of brother so-and-so. God, for some ungodly reason, I am wanting what sister such and such has. When you start feeling that way, go to God. Begin to start praying and asking God. God, remove this spirit of jealousy. Remove this spirit of covenantness. Remove this spirit of envy. So that I can be filled with your kindness. So that I can be filled with your patience. So that I can know how to love others as you will want me to love them. And because we can't have this kind of love unless it's through the Father. Unless it's through the Holy Spirit that is within us. That's what's going to help us. To love to this degree as the Bible tell us to love. Because once again, it says love never gives up. So when you fail, when you stumble, when something is going wrong, when situations ain't looking like it's supposed to be, don't give up. Because of the love you have inside of you will not allow you to give up on that person, will not allow you to give up on yourself, will not allow you to give up on the circumstance, will not allow you to give up. Because love is always hopeful. That means you have that hope, you have that trust, you have that faith that God has given you, instilled in you, instilled inside of you. That love, that love, that's what it is. And they also say that we will never lose faith, which I already say, and we'll endure through every, every circumstance. It's letting us know that we'll keep pushing, we'll keep going because of that love, because we know that what's in us will allow us to keep going, which is the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to read this one, this one verse about Romans. I mean, in Romans, it's in Romans 5 and 5, which talks about love and stuff. And it, right here, it tells us, and once again, this is the New Living Translation. It says, and in this hope will not lead to disappointment. So what is this hope? This hope is the hope of our salvation. This hope is the hope of, of 
the faith we have in Christ, the faith that we believe in Jesus Christ, that hope, this hope will not lead us to disappointment. The hope that we have in our Heavenly Father will not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us. So we should know. We should know that God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love, with God's love. So that's how we get the love of God is when we allow the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with God's love so that we are filled and that we are overflowing with God's love that we'll be able to share with other the love of God. And that's what it is. Once again, it lets us know that love is patience and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. That is not love. That is not love. When we have that stinking attitude, that is not love. No, when we're being rude and when we're being proudful, that is not love. When we're being boastful, ah, I got that. You ain't got it. That's not being boastful. I mean, that's not being love. That's not love. That's being boastful. And it says it does not demand its own way. Once again, it is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. It keeps no record. It keeps no record. Once you forgive, forgive and let it go. Now, I, it's, hey, that sounded so easy, didn't it? <laughs> forgive and let it go. But it's going to be a work in progress. And that's why you have the Holy Spirit there to help you and to guide you and to lead you. To, to forgive others is there to help you and to, to not think of yourself not being your not thinking of your own ways and and how you could how how you could get this person to help you you know always you know trying to figure something out for your own way that's not that's what the, the Holy Spirit will help you will help you it will help you to be patient. The Holy Spirit will help you to be kind. The Holy Spirit will comfort you and guide you. The Holy Spirit is like our personal little <laughs> personal trainer. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's our personal trainer to help us to walk this faith walk. And one way, once again, we can walk this faith walk is in love. It says this is the greatest love. This is the greatest kind of love. Because I'm telling y'all the truth. This world, we we get love so confusing. It's, it's a word that, that we throw out so easily. It comes and go. But fruit people really know how to love. We Few, few people really know how to love. But once again, we go to God. Go to God. God, show me. Show me how to love this person. Because I know there's some people out here that's kind of hard to love. It's, it really is kind of hard to love them. But if you got, if you're pulling your strength from God, He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the will. He's going to give you the might to love your enemies he's gonna give it to you he's gonna give it to you to love your neighbors to love each other and that was one of God's great command in the Bible is to love is to love and you know I want to read um, 1 Corinthians 1 through 3 because it lets us know here that Without love, what we do don't mean a thing. What we do do not mean a thing unless you have that love. So don't do things so that you could boast about it. Don't do things so that you could brag about it. 
Don't do things so that you can be proud. Look at what I did. Yay. No, don't do things because of that. Do things because of your true, genuine love for others and for people and for God. So, back to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3, the New Living Translation. It says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but did not love others, I will only be a noisy gong and a clinging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secrets, secret plans and possess all the knowledge and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but did not love others I would be nothing if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body I could boast about it but if I didn't love others I would gain I would have gained nothing so that is our secret ingredient is love you could do all the works you want you could do all the 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 like I said all the works you could do all the works you want but if you don't have that secret ingredient which is love it ain't worth nothing. It ain't worth a thing. So on today, let's begin to start loving as God tells us to love. Love is an action. It's not just a noun. No, it's an action. It's a verb. It's a show. Do. You got to show kindness. You have to show patience. You have to show that you are faithful despite your circumstances. You have to show that you are not giving up, even though you may feel like giving up. I'm telling you, it's been times, it's been times, it's been times I feel like giving up. But God. God had instilled in me and poured in me his love. So when his love is within me, it gave me that strength. It gave me that will. It gave me hope that I could keep going. Even though it may not look like how I think it should look. But it's going to be okay it's going to turn around and that's another verse that God, God lets us know that all things all things work together for the good of those who love God you got to have the love it's the love love them just love him. Ask him to pour his love in you so that you could display his love to others and show that love, that kindness, that patience, that endurance, that long suffering, that the fruit of the Spirit, that you may show it. And love is one of the fruits. This is actually the first fruit that is mentioned. It's love. And it, it has to all work together with the love, the joy, the patience. And I, I want to read this last scripture. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, where it says, Three things will last forever, which is faith, hope. And love and the greatest of these is love so it's letting us know love is that secret ingredient and the most powerful 
ingredient that God has given us. And like I said, the only way you can obtain it is through God. We can't love each other on our own will, our own might, our own power, because we have feelings. And we allow these feelings to start getting in the way of some things. You know what I mean? Let somebody hurt your feelings. Oh, you want to go hurt their feelings too. Let somebody talk bad about you. Oh, you want to go say something to them. That's not love. That's not love. That is not love. So let us, just once again, just let us, let us go to God to receive his love so that we can go and pour out his love to others the way that he will want us to and everything. So anyway, I hope that y'all have, well, let me close us out in prayer first. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, as you continue to shower your love upon your people, Lord God, so that we may begin to go out and show love to others, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you as you continue to show us and guide us and teach us, Lord God, with the Holy Spirit. Spirit, that love is kind and love is patience, Lord God. That we should not have that jealous spirit, Lord God. We should not have that proudful spirit, Lord God. That we should not have those spirits that are not of God. But we ask that you allow the spirit of love to come in and overtake us like never before, Lord God. Once again, so that we may go out and spread your love, Lord God. Because once again, Lord God, you said love covers a multitude of sin, Lord God. So allow us to begin to love others, Lord God. Allow us to have that love within us, Lord God. So that when people do for us, when circumstances aren't going the way we, we think they should go, when things start getting a little uh, funky around us, Lord God, that we may begin to display the love, Lord God, which is the hope, Lord God, which is not giving up, Lord God, which is having the faith in you, Lord God, so that we can continue to display kindness, Lord God, and patience, Lord God, so that we may continue to endure the race, Lord God, that you have set before us with love. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for Jesus. And I thank you for God. I thank you, God, for all that you continue to do for your people, Lord God. I love you, Lord God. And I pray that you continue to show your love to each and every one of us, Lord. Love, I love, I love, I love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I hope that each and every one of y'all have a blessed and lovely day, a blessed and lovely week, as well as a blessed rest of your month. I love y'all. Be blessed and have a wonderful, 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 wonderful day. Be blessed.